<laughs> oh, the legendary Vincent Price. <laughs> Although not actually Vincent Price. I don't think that was actually Vincent Price. He was long in the grave when that was made up by The Simpsons. When did Vincent Price die? In the 23? Wow, you were on top of that. Someone did their homework. Hey, All Vincent right, Price good. is a legend in the horror genre, and of course that ties into the fact that this is our Halloween special. It is. This is our... Sp sorry, sorry. It is? <laughs> it is? It could also be that you have a movie that he died during the making of in one of your categories tonight. Possible. <laughs> or I have an entire Vincent Price... Holes in your... Vincent Price category altogether. Ooh. Ooh. So, uh, this is episode 10, and we have... We hit the milestone. Two digits. Is that, we, is that really a milestone? Are we done now? Can we fucking end this charade? Or do we have to keep going? Now, if we go by the fact that if we're going to end the podcast at the same time we should have ended wrestling, we have to go for at least another two years. Uh, it, what, for a number of episodes? No, for when we should have stopped while we were ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah. Or then ahead? Keep, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fair, fairish point <laughs> from Nick. <laughs> Should How many we... years of podcasting we have to do to, to match the number of episodes? Episodes? So we've done ten. Uh, we got to do another uh, three hundred and sixty thousand. Com com <laughs> completely doable, I think. Hour-long podcasts once a week. We'll be doing this into our sixties. Still, we're fucking dead. <laughs> Um, how long can we go before we introduce everyone? I don't know. About this long? Or, should, like, another five minutes? Yeah, uh, go longer. Uh, now. Okay. So, everybody sitting in the room with the phone is me, Drew, uh, Scott, and Justin Chu. Hello. Me, Drew, me, Scott, and me, Justin are here. Yes. And then, uh, we will temporarily lose Justin for the period of probably seven days. And then we will be replacing him with one Kelly Summers once he's off work. Yeah. And then people who are not sitting directly... Very, very tight scheduling going on today. Yeah, we, 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 we book well. Yeah. We book well. One person leaves, one person comes. It's all good. One person leaves, one person comes, one person stays up way too late because they live in England. <laughs> yeah. Get in a better country that has the same time zones as us. Yeah, come on. That was you, Sorry. Alex. No. <laughs> Sorry. That was Alex. Who had so, me. yes, the people who are not by the phone is Alex McConnell from Merry Old England. The U.S. of K. The U.S. of K. <laughs> and the United States of Kingdom. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you got to get on renaming it to that. <laughs> and uh, all the way from uh, Florida is our good friend Nick Unthank. Hello. Hello. Totally a letdown geographically after introducing the guy from England first. <laughs> hey, you're, Scott, this is how I look at it. Does England have their own Sasquatch? Fuck no. Does Florida have their own Sasquatch? Absolutely. Nick wins. <laughs> That's true. England, you got to get Florida on your... Florida does have their own Sasquatch. Simon hurt Florida. England does have their own Sasquatch. Simon Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> Whackity schmackity do. <laughs> I, I approve of Skunk Ape. Yeah. The old Florida Skunk we've, Ape. Uh, we've sort of disowned him, so I don't know if that counts. Yeah, he kind of lives in the States now, doesn't he? He's an, yeah, an expatriate. Ex he's an expatriate. Or an ex... Some, what's the English equivalent of a patriot? Uh, Expat? Expat? No. Ex I think Pat is just short for patriot. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. I think they still have patriots in England. Also, yeah, but I associate the Patriot with Mel Gibson being an American fighting the British, not British people. So shouldn't you associate Patriots with Australia? Touche. <laughs> no, because they're all criminals. 
I can't poking holes. They're <laughs> they're all criminals. They can't, the, they can't be a criminal and a patriot. No. Uh, you mentioned skunk ape. I actually live about forty minutes from the whole skunk ape, uh, like the whole hub of all the skunk ape lore. Well, why aren't you there? I swear to God, I thought you were just gonna say straight up like I live forty minutes from the skunk ape's house. <laughs> <laughs> I know where it is. I'm just not telling anybody. Check out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we live probably. How far is Chilliwack? Hour? Hour and change. Hour, Hour and half, change yeah. from where the majority of the North American Bigfoot sightings happen. Chilliwack's kind of the hot spot for it. Chilliwack and then, like, some places in Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, Bigfoot, good times. I would have been to United Ness. Apes. Loch Ness is dead, Alex. Get over it. <laughs> Nessie's dead. They, could, they proved they could it. Nessie's dead. The final nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose when there's only one like small area or lake where it could be, as opposed to the whole of, I don't know, the wilderness of North America. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. He, he, here's the thing with the Loch Ness bullshit. Like, <laughs> it's a lake. Check the lake, and then you're done. Like, yeah, I don't know. The lake's not like a pond. It's a giant ass lake that's got like pitch black water. I don't know. I feel like we have the technology in 2012 to pretty definitively say whether or not Nessie is hanging around in a lake. All we need to do is hire James Cameron and the USS Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll he'll figure that shit out. That's true. He raised the bar. He did raise the bar. Anything to distract him from making another goddamn Avatar movie. Oh, Nick, there is doing. two more coming. You didn't like uh, Fern Gully? You didn't like Fern Gully or uh, Dance, Dance Poca- with Wolves? Pocahontas? What else we got? <laughs> that Dance with Pocahontas is the last rainforest. <laughs> millions of dollars. To ruin the millions, of dollars, millions, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. We are our own soundboard. We are yeah, our own we soundboard. Are. We don't, I don't even need YouTube to play clips anymore. <laughs> so, as a as this is the Halloween special, we we I guess took the route of uh, of scarier things to talk about. <laughs> I don't know. Well put. Well, <laughs> scaries. Um, I know that Nick is a pretty big. Horror guy. We've done some talking. Horror guy or whore guy? Whore guy. He's a whore guy. Okay. Male whore. And and Alex, what's your stance on the uh, the genre of scaries? For or against? Are you... First, what's your stance on whores? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I find whores horrible. I don't know. <laughs> I approve. I, lo- I love how you didn't commit to your own joke. <laughs> <laughs> Just immediately bailed on it. <laughs> but he's, he's yeah. still full through. He's stuck with it. He's stuck with it. Are you, do you watch them? Do you not like them? Do you? What's your stance? I don't generally watch them. Uh, my girlfriend likes them, so sometimes I have to watch them. Do, does she like cheesy slasher ones where it's like cheerleaders getting killed, or does she like ghosts or monsters? Or it's more in sort of the sort of fantasy sort of stuff. It's not really. It's really more the dark films than the outright sort of slashers or. Oh, okay. Like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, and Scott, you're not really a horror guy. Not particularly. I'm, no, I'm not really a horror guy. You'll the, see movies, but I will see movies. Yes, I've been known. Known to see a few, to a few flicks. Movies. But yeah, the my issue is the uh, the uh, everybody likes a good scare uh, theory. I don't subscribe to it because I don't like to be scared. So no, rarely, I agree with that. Rarely do I go out of my way for it. And Justin, you're not really. Are you? Kinda. I kind of am. You'll, I mean, you'll not, watch them. I'll watch them. I don't go completely out of my way to watch them, but I've seen enough in my time to comment. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. I guess Nick and I are on our on the higher end of this then, because I pretty much will watch any horror movie, whether it's good or bad. As you're mostly ba- bad. As mostly, you're mostly bad. Yeah, absolutely. Time but so, time. sometimes it's fun to watch a bad horror movie, like. You know, it's not necessarily there to scare you, but it's there to watch, like, oh, that guy got his intestines ripped out. That looks so stupid, but so funny. Like, I, I, I'm I, not against watching a bad one. I enjoy a creative there's, kill. There's some great ones as well, anyway, so... Yeah. Like, uh, off the top of my head, like, Evil Dead 2, that's an awesome film. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Evil Dead 2 is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It's not even that really... That is my all-time favorite horror movie. Yeah? Oh, I'm, yeah, it's great. I'm waiting until they make a fourth one before I watch any of them. Well, they're, they're, they are. they're in the I process of re revamping it, but without Bruce Campbell, because Bruce Campbell's... He involved. He's involved, but he's not in the movie. Okay. It's not about him. It's yeah. about a girl, actually. Oh. 
It's it's not Ash as a boy. It's Ash Lee as a girl. But she oh. but she's made up to look exactly like. Oh yeah, boy. short haircut, <laughs> yeah. rugged, rugged, Giant handsome. Chin. Yeah, ruggedly handsome, good looks, absolutely. Yeah. Chainsaw but it's chainsaw arm. Chainsaw hand, yeah, for sure. But I know it's it's produced by Raimi and it has some Campbell's involved in it somehow. Like he's a story. They're all executive producers. Yeah, something like that. And it's I think it's going to be along the lines of Drag Me to Hell, like. They'll put, like, an innocent girl in there and make her try and be a badass, right? Like, I think that's kind of the idea behind it. But as far as I understand, it was... I think it was originally greenlit for, like, this year or next year, but now it's been pushed back to, like, 2015 or something like that. Well, we'll be dead by then. Well, we'll all be dead by the end of this year, so... Oh, yeah. Those crazy Mayans and they're running out of space in a giant circle. (laughs) Yeah. Make a bigger circle, Yeah, yeah, make a bigger circle! Don't get us all paranoid that the world's ending because you ran out of room. Scare a bunch of dumb people. <laughs> years later. All those old people who think that the world's coming to an end. Inconsiderate. Hey, but you know what? We're going to look like a bunch of jackasses when Y2K2 happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. When? In the year 4000? Now. Oh. This year. This is Y2K2? This is Y2K2. Oh, fuck. But, and we know how bad Y2K was. But to put ourselves out of our own misery, we should just watch the movie 2012 now and kill ourselves. Yes. We'll, uh, in in more recent terms, we'll uh, brain damage ourselves. Oh. oh. Is that tasteless? Topical. Is that tasteless? I was going to say Mike Graham, but he's a little more relevant to wrestling than brain damage is. Yeah. And for, for the record, at the time, time of this recording, in the last two days, two wrestlers have hung themselves. Waiting for number three. Wait, who was number no, three? Mike Graham... Oh, shot himself. Shot himself. Have killed themselves. Have killed themselves. Yeah. Hmm. I did not hear that. I knew what brain damage Lex Luger, you had better be the third one. Who's killed themselves? Oh, uh, brain damage. He was a wrestler He's for like, like IWA Mid-South and CCW. CCW death did some deathmatchy stuff. Uh, he hung himself two days ago? Yeah. yeah, and then well, yesterday, uh, Mike Graham, who Florida. was like, yeah, Florida, like back in the eighties and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, he blew his brains out, I guess. So this begs the question: Who's next? Lex Luger, and if it's not Lex Luger, yeah. you really want Lex Luger? To I've hated himself. Lex Luger since I was a kid, and especially when he killed Miss Elizabeth. That's true. That put it over the yes. top. He really. How is he gonna die though? Is he gonna drive his? His wheelchair off the pier. <laughs> Somehow he'll get himself a hold of some steroids and oxycodone, and he'll drive a motorcycle into something, get another bionic arm, <laughs> then he'll be going through security at the airport, which will set off the alarm, security will tackle him, and instantly break his neck <laughs> and kill him. I was just thinking he gets like an itch on his head or something, goes to itch it, and knocks, kn- knocks, his, knocks his own fucking brains out <laughs> with his bionic arm. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess if he has to kill himself, then... I hope he blows his brains out and it doesn't work like that episode of South Park where that guy keeps trying to kill himself <laughs> and he just has to constantly keep shooting himself until he eventually dies. This is how much I hate Lex Luger for no valid reason other than the fact that he killed Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. Okay, allegedly killed Miss Elizabeth. He probably but killed But he definitely <laughs> killed her. He was giving her the pills. Yeah. But uh, we, we've digressed from movies to wrestling, which I'm sure... All of our wrestling friends listening don't want to hear about. They want to hear us talk about movies. Wait, our wrestling friends don't want to hear us talk about wrestling? No, they get enough. They got enough. All right. (laughs) They're good. Um, uh, Speaking of horror films, I've seen two in the last week or so that are in theaters. Without giving away spoilers, I saw Sinister. Not going to say anything about it, but... I hated it. <laughs> and I saw Paranormal Activity 4 last night, and or yeah, yesterday afternoon, and you can save yourself the time and just wait for number five, because I'm sure it's coming. Uh, I truly cannot stand any of those Paranormal Activity kinds of movies. So Here's my thing. The shit out of me, so. Number one... I'll skip it, it entirely. Well, number one, if you haven't seen it, is actually, like... It goes along the lines of an actual possession horror movie. Once they get past number one, they turn it into comedy, like com- comedic relief, and things go from like like actual demonic possessions and like evil things happening to like oh, chair moved, or like hey focus on this room for five minutes as the camera just sits there, and then like oh the blinds moved a little bit. Like, th- it goes from actual evil to, like, oh, this demon is just fucking with the family by moving toys around or, like, dropping a book. Yeah, it seems like a really petty demon. 
Yeah, like if it's got these evil powers where it can possess people, why is it why is it only like moving wind chimes or like s- slightly turning a table in the front room? Like why is it being such a like such a little bitch? Yeah, like, it, like it's it's so underwhelming and it builds up to nothing. That description reminds me a lot of Kelly Stegman. It seems less like a demon and, and more like an invisible, fairly large house cat with the. <laughs> An invisible I cougar? Knocking shit over, invisible awesome away, <laughs> Tearing up all your toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Chewy, b- back to wrestling. Chewy brought up a very valid point that that description of the of uh, paranormal activity <laughs> brings up Kelly's description of the Undertaker. <laughs> Just insane. So you had the Undertaker, a, a man who, by all accounts can control the armies of the undead and can wreak havoc upon the world. And is immortal. And is immortal, but his sole purpose and existence <laughs> is to win a wrestling championship <laughs> and nothing else. He comes back to win the WWF title. He has set his sights very specifically. <laughs> not not enslaving mankind, not bringing a plague or apocalypse upon the world. It's getting in there and beating, beating King Triple Mabel H for the <laughs> title. <laughs> He beat King Mabel for the title once, didn't he? Not for the title, I think he beat him. Okay, well, regardless, King Mabel <laughs> did the job to the taker. <laughs> Thankfully, Mabel never had the title. Thankfully, Mabel... Oh yeah, I guess he didn't have the title. What am I thinking of? I don't King know. of the Ring? Yokozuna? <laughs> <laughs> eh, fatty, fatties are all the same Fat to me. Fat dudes? <laughs> fatties are the same. Anyways, uh, have either of you seen any movies of worthy talking about Nick or Alex? <laughs> the last film I saw was Resident Evil 5, so... And? No. Explain more. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> well, it was it. It's, uh, if you like 3D, which most people don't, then you'll love this movie. Which <laughs> <laughs> if you like a thing that most people hate. <laughs> yeah. And you have, I'm assuming you had seen the four previous to that? Yeah, I, I've seen them yeah. all, so... Oh, yeah, I see. It's got Drew's favorite girl in it. Ugh! <laughs> Euro trash Mila Jovovich. Fuck you. It's not necessary to see any of... Well, it's not necessary to see any of them anyway, and it's probably best that you don't. I, I didn't mind number one. You don't one. need to see any of the previous one to understand any of them, because they're just so... The story just... Yeah, it, it seems like... so impossible to understand in the first place yeah it's hard it's hard to take it because it's you know it's a video game so it's i don't know i i like the first one i thought it was okay i saw it when it was in theaters but that was what 10 years ago was that when it came out ish Ish, almost 10 years ago i saw it in theaters and i really liked it but then as they progressed in the series they just became more over the top like adding way too much cgi and silly characters and like by the time i didn't haven't seen the fifth one but by the time they got to the fourth one it was seriously like you were watching cut shots of a video game yeah the, the fifth one is very much like that it's just you know and, special and effects the, for the sake of it and the depressing thing is you're watching cut scenes from a video game and it's not a resident evil video game it's like some no. weird matrix rip off like gears of war not even that just yeah. i don't even know what kind of video game it's ripped off of but it's not a resident evil video game that's why i hate the movies hmm. the first one was interesting up to a point but once they got out of the mansion it was kind of a stupid movie so yeah yeah once it I, stopped I being resident evil it became a really shitty movie franchise yeah for sure i will say though uh sienna guillory who plays jill valentine is a total babe yeah, she's super hot. Uh, it's funny you said the Matrix. I don't. Uh, this just popped in my head. I was reading online yesterday or day before. Uh, do you? Any of you know who the very first choices were to play Neo and Morpheus? Robert Redford and Sidney Poitier. <sighs> Maybe if that movie was made in the seventies, Justin. You call me Mister Morpheus. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know Justin? Not a no? Do either of you know Nick or Alex? Uh, Roddy Piper and Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> I would have watched and enjoyed that. I would so see that more. movie for sure. Um, the uh, vi- I'm gonna say uh, it would rip off a, a popular film of, of five years earlier and be um, Tom Travolta and uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Love it. 
Ooh, that would Ooh. actually... I would probably... That would be good. I don't know, though. Travolta playing... I don't know. Uh, Neo being gay? I can't yeah, see Yeah, it. I can't see... Well, can't Gayer. 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 Oh. But then Matrix would be an unofficial sequel. It would be an unofficial sequel. Unofficial sequel. In the yeah. John Travolta canon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, the very first choices for Neo and Morpheus were Will Smith to play Neo and Sean Connery to play Morpheus. Weird. Yeah. Interesting. That was the very first choice. And then the second choice for Morpheus was uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins. Both of them turned it down. Uh, and then it went to uh, good old Larry Fishburne. Did they... Now, the people who turned it down, did they... They must have gotten an advanced copy of the script for the third movie. The second and third. <laughs> second it, and yeah. third. Second movie. and third. And said, oh no, I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. Uh, I think, as far as I understood, it was... Sean Connery turned it down because he was on his way to quitting the business, uh, which he should have done before he made his final film, although I know Justin, Justin kind of likes that movie. <laughs> his last movie was The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Ah, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I not well. He did. He did one animated feature after that, but it wasn't like a big animated feature. But yeah, his last film was uh, *League of Extraordinary Gentlemen*. And then Classic. Anthony Hopkins turned it down because he was doing, I want to say *Red Dragon*, probably. Possibly. I know he turned it down because he was doing another movie. And oh, and then I don't know why this still popped in my head. The original, the original choice to play Indiana Jones was Tom Selleck. I and that he, I heard. And yeah, he yeah. turned it down because of his schedule for Magnum PI. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, sweet PI bucks. I would have been okay with and that. Because they wouldn't, and because they wanted him to shave his mustache. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. That's right. yeah. Not doing it. And you know what? Anybody who Good wants call. Tom Selleck without a mustache can go kill themselves. Because <laughs> Tom Selleck's mustache is the sexiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> well, I don't know. John Morrison's abs. <laughs> but, anyways, anyways, sorry. Why no. we put the mustache on the abs? Oh, <laughs> man, we're talking. And give him Neil McDonough's eyes. <laughs> no, only you think Neil McDonough's eyes. Did we watch the same movie? <laughs> <laughs> They're not that dreamy. You're dumb. They're not Taylor Pyatt dreamy. <laughs> True story. Only no, Justin and I get no that knows reference. Your local sports references. Local? I he's, don't know your local he's a, sports he's a, references. He's a well traveled professional athlete. Yes. He's been all over the world. And by all over the world, I mean North America. Yeah. The part of the world that matters. The part of the world that matters. Sorry, Alex. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> He's been here. He's wrestling in Preston, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay, and Scott, I don't care about you. Sure, you see anything? What? Well, I've seen things. Fuck you. Yeah, you saw things that are not about Scientology. You, well, yeah, not in quotation marks. No, seriously, it's not about Scientology. If you ask anyone involved in the movie, that's what they'll say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, saw the master... Uh, last week. want to see. Fuck you. Yeah, you saw it without us, you dick. Yeah, and you saw Argo without me, so fuck you. Fuck you! I saw it at noon on my we'll day off. Okay, okay. okay, you and me will see the master. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we got win. We just worked out a huge fight <laughs> really quickly. We resolved things fast here. Yeah, so I saw the master. I thought it was really good. Uh, reviews from critics. I'll say that's really good. Reviews from uh, the proletariat. Uh, all don't like it because it's slow, I guess, but I didn't find it that slow, and um, and I'm gay for Paul Thomas Anderson, so anything he does is good. I do yeah, like, I was going to say, it's a P.T. Anderson I do movie, love so PT. you should expect it to be a little slower paced anyway. Yeah, yeah P.T.'s that's known for his yeah. slower paced stuff, but it's good. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't be surprised if either Joaquin or Phil C. Hoff uh, get nominated for acting, because both, yeah, both are really good. Joaquin <clears> coming <throat> off of his random weirdo white rapper movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where he quit acting. Yeah, he quit acting because he was going to be a legit rapper. Yeah. Was it, did we ever figure out if was that, that was all gimmick or what? I, no, it was it was, was legit. It, was it shoot? I, he, thought, when, I thought it was all, I thought it was all work. I it was no, like he, st- he started about. working the movie and then he realized how much he loves rap. <laughs> so he decided he was going to be... I don't know if it was rap. I think it was more of like... Uh, Folk singing? Uh, no, it was um, like... Crunking. Freestyling, I guess, or something. Hmm. Like, and he just... Why is it crunking? Crunk, 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 crunking is dancing, not singing. But, uh, yeah, no, so, uh, Johnny Cash doing rap. Yeah, weird. But, yeah, so, hmm. you saw The Master, you, and you liked it, you seen anything else? Uh, the day before, or after? After. The day after I, I, I wish I had seen them in the opposite order, but the day after The Master, I saw Here Comes the Boom. Yeah, we did! Fucking, uh, I don't, well, I my... Was gonna, I was going to say it fucking sucked, then I was like, well, it's the best Kevin James movie in a while. I was going to say, my review of the movie was, it's not the worst Paul Blart movie I've seen. <laughs> the movie's the movie's secondary title is Paul Blart 2, Mall Copier, or Paul Blart 2, <laughs> MMA Fighter. Yeah. Or Paul Blart 2, Ghost Protocol. Of course. <laughs> 
But yeah, uh, it, uh, nobody needs to really see that movie. No, it, you know what? Here's the thing. Kevin James movies are designed for a certain demographic, and that's stupid people, stupid Americans. I was going to say, people with, people with brain injuries. Or, well, I guess, or MMA fags, because they want to watch MMA f- movies. They want, they want to see Mayhem Miller do the job mid-movie? Yeah. Mayhem does the job. Shale Sonnen does the job. Yeah. Uh, freaking... I will say, though... The, the one highlight of the movie, if they could have cut out all the parts of the movie that involved Kevin James with his shirt off, I will say, which is terrible. To be fair, he's better with a shirt off in this than any than he would have been in any of his last bunch of movies. He, yeah, he definitely slimmed down a little bit. He lost probably 30 pounds. Yeah, but he was still a big mess. He's still a fat guy. And he's yeah. really hairy. I was not a fan of how hairy he was. I'm a hairy guy, but that was gross. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not into bears? I'm not into bears. Or otters. So you, or... Like, so you like the twinks? Uh, I will... You like a, you like if I had to choose, I would choose Twinks. Right. But regardless, I'm a top. Okay. Yeah. But so so I might be an otter because I'm not a fat guy who's hairy. Yeah. I'm like I'm a moderately sized guy who's hairy. So the I'm otter's not... power is generated with speed rather than strength. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like for sure I'm not a bottom. Right. <laughs> I can't believe what that. happens. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. Uh, but if they could cut out all the Kevin James parts and just go solely to Boss Rutten, because Boss played this movie like he did all of his commentating in Pride, which was on coke. On coke and out of his mind. There's no way that he was not on coke for this movie because he was insane. Like, dancing and, like, random, like, like... Dancing and punching and, like, being crazy and fast-talking. Like, and and not, like... It wasn't, like... the, The... Him being crazy was not pertinent to his character... You know it was just Boss being on coke. Yeah. Like, it, I don't even know if that he had lines. I think they just like, Boss, do some lines. Go for it. And he misinterpreted by do some lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, he was the goddamn best part of that movie. That and the fact that Selma Hayek is super hot. She's got some boobs. She has some <laughs> big old titties. Big old titties. Double D's on a 4 foot 11 girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As it should be. <laughs> yeah. I but, like him. I like my girls disproportionate. Yeah, that movie was not as bad as Paul Blart, but if you have to choose between the two, I choose Mike Gramming myself. <laughs> no, it's it's better than Paul Blart. I didn't see Zookeeper. I can only imagine it's also better than Zookeeper. Zookeeper has my number one biggest movie pet peeve. Talking animals. Don't like him? Oh, I fucking hate talking animal movies. I hate that. Like, like, I hate movies that are based are around they, kids. Are they animated talking or do they like... Anything. Anything. So like... It's like the adventures of Milo and Otis. You hated that too? Okay. I hate that movie because of how many cats died, died in the making filming. that movie. <laughs> that movie was made during the era where they did not care if animals died during the filming of the and movie. And wasn't it made in Japan or something? Not something so much like. the era as, to where, as is where it was made. Yeah. Yeah. It was but it was, Japan, yeah. it was along the lines of... Like, you know all those times when you see, like, a TV show or a movie, and afterwards it says, no animals were killed during the, or harmed during the making of this production? Doesn't say that on my This was the movie that made them have to put yes. that at the end of movies. Yes. Because they killed a thousand cats <laughs> and a thousand dogs. Yeah. Making, like, how, you can't tell me that you put a bear and a cat in a cabin, and the bear didn't eat, like, 30 cats. <laughs> There's no way that didn't happen. Like yeah. a you kind of bear or an animal no, bear? No, like an animal bear. I'm an otter, not a bear. Well, sorry. <laughs> but no, like any anything where they have an, a real life animal and they, they CGI in a talking mouth uh, makes me furious. Yeah. I hate that. I hate movies, adult movies that are centered around a kid. I hate it because they can't do anything. You can't swear you can't kill a kid unless it's certain movies that I saw recently. But, I don't but I mean, you can't do anything. Like, but, like, like, like drama adult films or like adult films. No, adult <laughs> 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 centered around a kid. Yes. yes, adult movies featuring a kid. No, I mean like adult drama movies. Okay, that's, like, that's I don't know. actually one of my biggest pet peeves is they never they're so reluctant to kill the kid. Yeah, like I've seen recently. I saw one movie where they kill a kid. I'm not going to give it away, but Justin saw it. Okay. But but like it's very rarely. Like there are times where like somebody kidnaps a kid. How would like. Ten minutes into that movie in real life, that kid would be dead. Yeah. Like, the movie that comes to mind is uh, A Perfect World with freaking Kevin Costner. Accidentally kidnaps a kid. He should kill that kid. Like, <laughs> first yeah. of all, that kid is not helping you at all. Like, it's just bringing you that down. That kid is a fucking albatross. It is. <laughs> like, kill the kid. But, of course, it's a dramatic movie. They can't kill the kid. I think that's why I like Law & Order SVU so much. Because sometimes they will kill the kid. Yeah. 
Well, like, I'm not against kid mo movies involving kids like, like The Omen. Like, not the remake, the original. Because that's a great movie. Like, you're, you're, you're sending it around a kid who's demonic, he's the son of the devil, and he does terrible things. That's fine. And you can potentially kill that kid because he's possessed by a demon. He's not a kid kid. Kid's a piece of shit. Kid is a piece of shit. But, like, yeah. Fucking kid sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I have more pet peeves. Oh, man. Horror movies where they build up the whole movie with one super hot lead girl and she never shows her boobies. Aww. <laughs> Look, I like I said. The point. I said this to Nick once when we were talking. I watch horror movies for four reasons. One is blood and guts. Uh, one is for scary shit. Uh, number three is for um, like an actually realistic storyline, and number four is boobies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like you really think that I watch Piranha to like understand that hey there might be ancient piranhas living <laughs> buried under the ocean no i watch it because i knew that eli roth was involved and he wanted to show a bunch of boobies <laughs> that's the only reason i watched that movie the sequel was called three double D. double d yeah i mean come on <laughs> you know i saw i, I still I saw, have not seen that you should. I had it on my computer for a year, and I still have not watched Piranha 3 it, it is a I watched the original in theaters and loved every fucking oh, frame of that movie. We still haven't seen the second one yet. We've kind of been postponing it because we need Justin here, and every time he's not here, we're going to like, we should watch Piranha. Oh, Justin's not here. I keep seeing the Blu-ray <laughs> on your shelf, and I quickly glanced past it earlier today, and I thought it said Piranha Dad, and I was <laughs> hugely intrigued by this what movie. It's Piranha it's Dad. A se it's a sequel to Ghost Dad, where Bill <laughs> Cosby becomes a piranha. <laughs> Maybe he'd be slightly more likable that way. Because <laughs> he sucks now. He sucks now. Yeah. Well, I, I guess if nobody else has seen anything. I mean, I, I, saw, I, I saw Argo. I really liked it. I thought it was funny. I'm sorry, Justin. I cut you off. But I, I'm i in charge today. Uh, I saw Argo. I thought it was great. It was a lot funnier than I thought it would be, considering how serious the nature of the movie is. Yeah. But uh, I'm telling you, Ben Affleck, love him or hate him, he can make a good goddamn movie. Yeah, which things we never thought we'd be saying. No, not at all. <laughs> Some number I, of years ago. You know what? As soon as I saw... Well, I mean, come on. He, he did make Good Will Hunting, but that was so long ago, and he has made so much think, was crap. It, was it Family Guy that I think hit the nail on the head with that? Where they, like, one of their cutaway jokes was, like, Damon and Affleck writing Good Will Hunting, and Damon's, like, at the desk working hard, and Ben Affleck's, like, in the corner smoking pot. Because <laughs> yeah, he wasn't, sure wasn't he eating happened. something? Yeah. He was, like, eating pizza or something and <laughs> yeah. just sitting on the couch? But, I mean, that was like, yeah, he's done so many layers of crap between Goodwill Hunting and, I guess, the town. Did, yeah. he, did he do something before? Did he, did he do Gone Baby Gone? Oh, yeah, he did yeah, do Gone Baby Gone. Yeah. Gone Baby Gone is really good. good I really like Gone Baby Gone. It's really yeah. good. It's, uh, not, nothing like doing a great dramatic movie and then casting your shithead little your brother shit in brother. it. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I Ben Affleck does great movies now. I mean, not so much acting as he does directing, but... He's, how, a, he's okay in it. I was going to say, yeah, how was his he's, acting in it? Like, decent? He's not the best part of the movie at all. Well, I'm, no, because everyone in it's better than him. Oh, yeah, like, the fact that your two of your main characters are John Goodman and Alan Arkin, like... Can't, can't really go wrong with that. Of course Ben Affleck's not going to be your best performer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, John Goodman can perform outperform most people. Yeah. Yes. So... You could put John Goodman and Alan Arkin in a truck and just have them drive co cross-country, and I would watch that show every night. I want to yeah. see that the show. Same, the yes. same can be said for the pairing of Brad Whitford and Richard Jenkins. Yes. Oh, my God, they are the best. <laughs> but, yeah, so Justin... Anyway, so before saw, I, I got cut off... Uh, uh, Sorry, Again. sorry, too. I'm going to cut you off, too. Uh, <laughs> I saw some movies recently. I saw um, uh, Cabin in the Woods not too long ago. Oh, um, so you know what we're talking about with Whitford and Jenkins, then? It. Was it the first time you saw it? I thought it was great. Um, do, I do not like Joss Whedon at all. He annoys the shit out oh, of me. Oh, that's right. I forgot you don't like person, him. Uh, as, not, not a fan uh, of the Whedon he's verse. Done, he just annoys the shit out of me, uh, with the exception of Cabin in the Woods and The Avengers. Um, but that's solely because of the genre it's around it has nothing really to do with his ability right you're not, um, a, you're not a firefly guy or anything i did not like firefly i tried to i tried to watch three episodes of it and just fucking could not get into it huh. well, then i guess you're not a fan of serenity either um, wouldn't it be weird if he hated firefly and loved serenity <laughs> got through all the show i was like well i'm fucking skipping this the the movie's different than the show yeah because the show's a lot I, I would say like it's got a lot more comedy to it the movie has comedy, but the movie's also got some pretty serious yeah, shit. Yeah, the movie's so. definitely more serious, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, another movie I saw, actually, 
recently, like a couple days ago, I saw The Stuff, which yeah. is a very schlocky Roger Corman movie about nice. a kind of follows the same viral campaign that they did with Cloverfield where they have um, this weird stuff coming up out of the ground and they start selling it as a dessert and the des- <laughs> and people start actually mutating and like become husks of themselves because they want to eat this dessert so much uh, and it's supposed to be satirical but it just it's a it's a mess like <laughs> I don't I think they just went out and shot for maybe three days this major movie with all kinds of effects and it just um, an amazing amount of practical effects and then they're like, oh shit, we have to edit and they edited it in the car on the way to the movie. <laughs> it's a fucking mess. If you can sit down and strap yourself to a chair and watch the movie and fill in the giant gaps mm. of the movie, it's kind of interesting. Um, it would be great if someone had remade it like a week after the movie had made had been made <laughs> because it's such an 80s movie and it's mm. such a commentary on the whole 80s mentality. I don't think it would really work that well today. Like We still kind of have that 80s mentality of consume, 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 but we don't have as much excess yeah. as the 80s was all about. So I don't think it would really work. Yeah, for sure. Um, which, but that movie is just a... A complete fucking mess, but it's it's very interesting. It's got a lot of really good scenes, and it has Garrett Morris of Saturday Night Live fame in a horror movie. Which is, is he doing weird. subtitles for the deaf? Um, uh, and also Paul Sorvino from The Godfather in this really really shitty horror movie, huh. which also confused me. Um, and the other movie I watched, um, oh uh, shit, what was the other movie that I watched? Uh, well, I watched Ernest Scared Stupid because I thought we were going to do a yeah. whole movie. We were going to talk about it, but then we ran out of time. We were filming uh, silly honestly, things. I truly love that movie. I, I know you guys kind of picked it as, as a joke, but I no, really, no, no. We, we, really do we like picked it because Kelly and I absolutely love that movie. Like, oh, love okay, it. Well, good. Oh, we don't hate it at all. We love no. it. You, I, you've seen it, yeah? I've seen it, and Kelly and I watched like half of it because it was on TV like uh, probably earlier this year, and... Uh, Kelly found it to hold up better than I did, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ke- Kelly and I are actually both pretty huge Ernest Marks, I, cause so... Because, yeah, it had been, well, it would have been probably 15 years since I've seen an Ernest anything. I'm like, oh yeah, he's retarded. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the funny thing, too, is now, now that we're talking about Ernest, is I read yesterday that they're think that they're doing a revamp of Ernest... Son of Ernest. With his, ...with his fictional son. Yeah. Don't know that I approve of that. I don't at all. That sounds absolutely terrible. Yeah, I, I think it's just to make it make Ernest relevant to a more current like group of fans, I guess, because all the fans that watched him are now like our age, right? Yeah. Like, there's no kids below us that even probably even know who he was. Nope. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and he's a no, pedophile too. I forgot about watch, that. Like, all he does is hang out with kids. <laughs> he's he's gross. <laughs> he's not a pedophile. He's a ped. He is a guy. No, that's right. I forgot about my Ernest problem. He pretends to be retarded so he can hang out with kids, and everyone thinks it's okay. <laughs> Ernest is a goddamn ped. Stop talking ill of the dead. If you're gonna speak ill of the dead, let's shit talk brain damage. <laughs> he's not a pedophile. It's, that's not the problem that parents allow him to be around the kids because he's a pedophile. It's a problem because the guy is clearly has multiple personality disorder to the yes. point where he will stage these major attacks on trolls in the form of a hairdresser, a Roman general, uh, of, of, what else did we, he was a, a Mongol at some point. Oh he god, I love the Mongol. A lady in a neck brace from Coffee Talk. Oh, um, so good. <laughs> he was an Australian for like two seconds. <laughs> um, this guy's clearly got these very, and, and, and he has some kind of engineering capabilities because he has a giant garbage truck yeah. with weird robotic mops. Oh yeah. That suddenly get him trapped inside of a dumpster, like a trash compactor kind of thing, and he almost dies, except his dog saves him. So, I mean, this is clearly a dangerous human being that should not be around children. Let's leave our kids alone with him. I also was thinking, how great of a, how great of a like, Freddy versus Jason would there be if it was Ernest versus Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> <laughs> For who's the bigger creep? Just bigger creep, bigger, like, weird... Look, let's see who can make the weirder breakfast machine. 
I don't know. I think Pee Wee's got this one in the bag. I mean, he's been caught with his junk out. That wasn't Pee Wee. That was Paul Rubens. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He was in the costume. I guarantee it. Well, I'm sure he was in the costume. But Pee Wee and cool. Fred Willard in the same uh, same venue. Or are they ski pulling each other? <laughs> they're, they're getting each other the Dutch rudder. That would definitely happen. Let's <laughs> keep pulling. <laughs> Give it a little go Oh, just uh. terrible. Hey, Justin, did you see something? Doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> actually, be, uh, be, <laughs> uh, me, Drew, and Kelly saw uh, Wet Hot American Summer. Eh, uh, last no, week. we didn't. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I know we did. <laughs> yeah. You, you liked it, right? I it's, have... it's pretty insane. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. If I have to compare that to the only other movie that they've made that I've seen... Way better. Way better. <laughs> no, it was good. It was funny. Uh, no, no, uh... Let's put it this way. I would rather bang more than half the dudes in that movie than the majority of the women in that movie. That's true, because your women choices are Molly Shannon, Janine Garofalo, <laughs> and what? Well, Elizabeth Banks. She's banging. Elizabeth Banks, Banks yeah, yeah. She's fine, but she's kind of annoying. I'd have to pillow facer or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah there uh, f- i forgot like there are a billion people in that movie. all of my favorite current like tv comedians are in that show with the exception of thomas lennon and yeah, he probably should have been in that movie. i don't know why he wasn't actually because most of the cast of the state was in that movie yeah yeah i don't know but didn't he write or direct it like i thought that was one of his movies it's i think it's all david wayne david wayne yeah he directed yeah, it wayne oh. wayne directed and wayne and showalter wrote it yeah I didn't think. did uh mib didn't have anything to do with writing not writing or directing he was i'm sure he helped out fun, with fu- stuff funny thing is their other movie that i'm talking about was uh wanderlust which was the paul rudd jennifer aniston bullshit from last year <laughs> uh i hated it but the thing is i didn't realize until i was like I don't remember what I was... Oh, it was because when I when I went to look up Wet Hot American Summer after we watched it, and I saw them, and I was clicking on their like pages on IMDb and stuff, it came up with that, and that was when I realized, like, oh shit, that's their movie, but I didn't realize that Showalter, Wayne, and, and MIB all play themselves in that movie. They're the bad guys in, in, in the movie, us? and they all play themselves. themselves. That's silly. The three <laughs> of them are the villains in that movie. <laughs> Weird. Didn't realize that until after I like read up on it. <laughs> Huh. I feel like they're making a, a sequel or prequel to Dwight Hunt American Summer. I was reading really? that somewhere, yeah. Yeah, I th- yeah, I think I heard that too. Maybe a sequel. Yeah. Okay, guys, yeah. a prequel with all those people now is going to be horrible to, lo- horrible to look at. <laughs> yeah. Jean Garofalo is not oh. held up well. No. Nope. No, she, she, Jean, she was cute on News Radio. What Jean happened? Garofalo. She was, radio, she was cute on Wolf. Larry Sanders' show. She is not cute now, nope. and even though I pretty much agree with all, all of her political views, she's kind of a cunt about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she is not pleasant. Hey, Justin, did you, did you see any movies? <laughs> you guys are assholes. I promise you won't get cut You're off You're going to actually time. go this time. We're out. I really, really hope Alex cuts him off. <laughs> Alex, are you alive? <laughs> <laughs> Dick. Uh, uh. Still podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> you are an awfully quiet man. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't know who Ernest is. So. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he didn't translate very well across the pond. Yeah, I don't know uh, if he's... Alex, in... Ernest is basically our Benny Hill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah that very, very similar. Okay. Right. No, well, uh, he's probably more Mr. Bean than Yeah, more Benny Mr. Bean Hill, than Benny yeah. Hill. I guess yeah. Mr. Bean, but he actually he's talks. He's revered in the same way that Benny Hill is revered yes. in your part of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Although yeah. Benny Hill did translate well yeah. over here in, like, the early 80s. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways. Yeah, I don't think we have anything <laughs> over here. God damn it. Just go. You gotta power I through it. The only time I've ever heard of him is through references from, like, Family Guy or something. So. Ah. Yeah. Well, okay, power through, Justin. <laughs> can I actually just speak? Go, just now? go, just start just, talking. Justin is going to talk. Holy shit, I can actually speak. Um, yeah, so uh, flying back to Vancouver from Toronto, and I managed to catch two films. Well, one and seven eighths of a film. Okay. I was going to say they had time for two movies on that flight. It's not that not long, is quite. it? Yeah. So I saw the films Prometheus and Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Had you seen either before that? No. What did you think of Prometheus? What do you think? Prometheus. Um, I can see why a lot of people hated it. <laughs> Uh, did you almost throw up at the same scene that Kelly did? No. Okay. Oh, okay, because Kelly was pretty... What? Ke- Kelly had a back. visceral reaction to it. Oh, that. Yeah, that's I was fine. pretty close to throwing up at that part. Yeah. Okay, good. I was doing physical comedy on a podcast, and I was hoping that you guys would understand what I was talking about. Nick, have you seen it? 
I have not. Oh, okay, well, we won't ruin it for you unless yeah, you want I, it I, ruined. I, honestly, never. I'm never going to watch that movie, so you can go ahead and ruin it. All right, anyway, so uh, the general gripe on the internet seems to be with uh, Damon Lindelof's writing in it. Mm. And I would tend to agree, because the general the general concept is there, and it's good. But there are so many holes and gaps in the storyline that yeah. never get explored, yeah. that you have to make huge assumptions with. Yeah. So, which it's, is, so it's lost. It's lost, exactly. <laughs> it yeah, yeah. It's, it's seasons 1.5 through to 6 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of Lost, but explaining the origins of Alien. Yeah. So, like, why did they bring that up? I don't know. Yep. We, ne- we never heard about here, it again. Here, we'll never see it again. Here, we'll never here, see it again. My thing with it is that I am so hardcore gay for the Alien universe that I just completely blocked out all of the plot holes. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, like yes, yep. Alien's coming at the end. It works it's so coming. That, it's that, coming. That's the other thing. Because I knew it was an Alien prequel, I spent the entire movie just waiting for the reveal. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how much the rest of the movie actually retained. Uh, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. But like, yeah, I, I knew it was coming, yeah, so and I was, it was so, that, so psyched and, for it. And it was, it was pretty cool. I could get behind it. Yeah. Although I want to know who those giant White statue people monsters were. Just aliens. Just aliens? Just Did they aliens. have four toes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't check, but I should have. Did they, did they, but they kind of came out of a hatch, didn't they? They came out of a hatch. <laughs> this is stupid. How many lost comparisons are they going to be? <laughs> Alex, not, there will never be enough lost comparisons. It's the greatest show that's ever been made. <laughs> What about the Hurley Bird? What the fuck was that about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally forgot about the Hurley Bird. Oh, man. You remember that Sean Penn movie, Hurley Bird? <laughs> <laughs> remember when Hurley's dad was Cheech Marin? Yep. <laughs> okay, anyway, so you saw Prometheus and you yes. you enjoyed it enough. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it enough in spite of itself. Okay, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. And, and then uh, Seeking, Seeking Friend for the Underworld was cute. I liked yeah. it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Funny, it was then, funny then serious? Funny then serious, yeah. but still... Maintaining humorous tones. Yep. It, was, uh, yeah. it worked, despite how there are lots of elements of the movie that wouldn't have worked in any other scenario for yeah that kind of a movie. Yeah, for sure. But I'd say I'd say it was probably the least annoying Steve Carell movie I've seen in a long time. In a long time, I agree. Like, cause he wasn't he was a little more toned down, especially because yeah. of the serious did, nature of the movie. Yeah. Did you Did you ever see Date Movie? Yeah. Date night. Date, date night, night. Sorry, date night. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was. I'm pretty sure date night is better than date, date movie. movie. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of similar levels of of Carell, and and he yeah. was toned back a little. Sometimes bit. Sometimes he was really over the top, and then there was times where he was like, he was like, uh, like Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah, yeah, style. Yeah, 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 for sure. I will say that there is definitely a moment in that movie where I I saw it with like one of my friends. There was only like three of us in the theater. And at one point, I stood up and clapped as loud as I could because one of my favorite people in the entire world is in that movie. Yeah, Denver! T.J. Miller. T.J. Miller playing defense against his own face. (laughs) Dear God, do I love T.J. Miller. I watched Yogi Bear just because T.J. Miller was in that movie. (laughs) If you guys don't know who T.J. Miller is, just look him up. He's... Ridiculous. Yeah, like you, you might not know the name, but if you saw the face, you'd probably recognize him from something. He's done like a lot of stuff. He's in Cloverfield. He's the cameraman, He's in, the cameraman Cloverfield. in Cloverfield. He's yeah. in. She's out of my league. He plays yeah. Stainer, <laughs> his best friend, Jay Baruchel's best friend. Good character name. Oh, terrible. He's yeah. in. Uh, he's a bunch of things. Yeah, and he and he's a sta- and he's a stand-up comedian and uh, and has a podcast. And he's butt buddies with Pete Holmes, yeah. who is also great. Yeah, and the the best thing about TJ, well, one of the I don't know if it's the best thing, but an awesome thing about TJ Miller is he was talking about on uh, probably the Douglas Movies podcast actually, um, the last movie he was in, the advice the director gave to him. No, it was the director. Was, Doug had the director on. Oh, and he was right. talking to the director. Who was like, it? Was it Ty West? It was the director of the Goods. Oh yeah. Um. Uh. Crap. Can't remember his name. Go. Anyway, we, his his directorial advice to TJ was, TJ, you have a big, stupid face. You have to play defense against your big, stupid face. <laughs> Which uh, is true. Oh, it's uh, oh, Neil, 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 Neil Brennan. From uh, Chappelle Show. Chappelle Show, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes. That's right. 
Brennan, funny guy. Neil Brennan, funny guy, funny, funny guy. I've seen him live. I saw him and Mark Marin have a super awkward conversation live huh. at a taping of Marin's podcast. Mark Marin. <laughs> it was something. Not, not su- a fan that's, of the, that's super high. Not a fan of the self hating Jew, because yeah. if you're not, you won't like Mark Marin. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Not a fan of insufferable pricks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is not for everyone. Well, I don't know. Yeah, he's. I'm not high on him. I don't hate him, but he wouldn't be a very first choice for me to see him ever. He was in Almost Famous. That's true, he was in Almost Famous. But so was Jimmy Fallon, so what does that tell you? So your mileage may vary. <laughs> <laughs> it's really take it or leave it. So, uh, I guess Kelly's going to be late. <laughs> Just, yeah. just, a, just a tad. Just a tad bit. Yeah, he said he said he might be. So. Okay, well, we were expecting him. I guess yeah. he was off at six. So by the time he makes it here, yeah, he was he was off at six and said he he might. Sorry, he was off at two a.m. Alex. Yes. <laughs> so, That's what? a long shift. That's, yeah. Oh yeah, he's working forty hours in one day. Yes. The old forty. The old hour forty hour day. The first long forty hour day. So. So what is he at home eating pescetti right now? He's at home eating pescetti and ignoring us. Yes. <laughs> Hope not. Eating sketty. Eating sketty. Oh, God. Some weird Robot fart. (laughs) Someone made dubstep. (laughs) Dubstep. (laughs) Did we get a drop in from Skrillex? (laughs) Yeah. Well, who knows who's going to show up on this podcast? (laughs) Uh, Well, we... I did have an idea for a new thing today, but uh, Justin didn't know we were doing it, and Kelly's not here. So, I guess we can't do it yet. What's the new thing? Oh, it was going to be... I, I wanted to introduce a new cat, or new uh, game-ish thing. I've just... Uh, I guess every time we do one, or not every time, but every couple times, uh, I'll send a, like a, a Facebook message to you guys saying, like, do your top five whatever, right? And so I figured since it was the Halloween episode, you do the top... I was going to do... We did top five... Uh, movies that actually either actually scared you or made you feel really uneasy when you watched it or made you feel like you wanted to throw up at some point or <laughs> something like that. And But I g- guess you didn't see the Facebook message. And I, I did, but I can probably go off the top of my head if you guys start. Okay. Uh, Alex, yeah. did you do one? Yeah, but I, uh, I can only think of three, but I just thought of a fourth one in the past sort of 15 minutes. Okay, started. well, that's good. That's good. So I have a we'll allow four. it this time. We will accept your four, but next time you have to do six. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay. Nick, th- Nick, you did one? Yes. Yeah, okay, and Scott, you did yours? I got. I didn't write it down, but I'll see, you know what, I'll see what I can recall. Okay, well, I'm. Uh, we're going to, for lack of a better name, oh, not even a lack of a better name, I'm just going to call it Playing Favorites. Yay, that was my suggestion. That was Nick's suggestion, so we're going to play in Favorites. So, uh... I guess you just say your your top five from five to one, and you don't you don't necessarily have to give a description, but you can if you want. I mean, feel free to say anything about it. Just don't go into a million details, I guess. Uh, who would like to start? Who's next? Yours is probably freshest, so you can do yours if you want. Yours is probably laminated. <laughs> All right, I gotta get my cat off my notebook. What? Cat. Kitty. Um, I have two kitties in here. What? Um, I have a kitty, but he's not in the room. We have of my top five scariest. So five uh, to one. Number five is a movie that, honestly, once I went back for this list and kind of researched it a little bit, I didn't realize this as a kid, but apparently it's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it. Um, I bet I know what it is. It's a weird movie actually made by the same guy who did the stuff, um, which I also found out the other day. Um, it's a movie called The Ambulance. Uh, Do not with know it. Hmm. Oh, shit, what the hell is his name? Um, it really does matter who's in it, because once you hear it, because it's fucking weird. Uh, it's about an ambulance that uh, you don't people say. up when they're not really dead, and the ambulance. Eric uh, Roberts. Eric. For some reason, it really creeped me out as a kid, just the whole concept of if you fall and get hurt, an ambulance will pick you up, and then they'll just take you off to be worked on and killed by someone instead of actually to a hospital. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, came out in 1990. The main character is Eric, Eric Roberts. Roberts. Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. <laughs> uh, the chewing a lot of scenery, apparently. Um, <laughs> number four for me is Jaws. Not so much because it scared me as a kid, but just because every time I go to the beach, yeah. or, which I live in Florida, so <laughs> I'm around it a lot, Yeah. Uh, I constantly think of that movie, just everything around it. I love Jaws so much. In fact, the first episode I was on here... 
Universal Studios was a shithead because they took out the greatest ride of all That's time. That's right. Ah, oh, that sucks. Uh, my number three movie is Event Horizon, a Ooh, movie that as a one. kid scared me so much that I turned it off. Yeah. I didn't see I didn't it because I it heard it was so scary. After it. And still have That's a good call. Oh, he said he, he he hasn't seen it. He didn't see it because he heard it was really scary, and he still hasn't seen it. It's uh, it's trippy, man. When I watched it's... it over again. I, I spent most of the time actually consoling my then girlfriend because she's petrified of the movie, <laughs> and also kind of saying to myself, "This isn't nearly as scary as I thought it was." So I need to go back and watch it again. But it is genuinely disturbing. Hmm. Uh, in that weird Clive Barker. Yeah, 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 yeah very sure, Clive sure. Barker for sure. Uh, number two is a movie that, honestly, when I watch it, makes me feel itchy and and queasy every time I watch it, no matter how old I am. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah of the course. Re- Not the, the shitty remake. Yeah. You know that they're re-remaking it? Fuck off. It's a sequel to the original. Is oh, is it? I thought it was a it reboot is. of the first one, so they could do it in 3D. <laughs> Because <laughs> that movie is so dirty, and it just it messes with me every time I watch it. It's such a great movie. Mm. Not at, and, and everything's in your head. It's not at all gory, and it's just so goddamn disturbing. Yeah, it really is. Um, and then the number one all-time scariest movie still gives me chills when I think about it to this day is The Shining. For no, yeah. real, there's no real reason to even talk Love about it. it. It's yeah. fucking scary. As it hell. is yeah. fucking scary. Uh, okay, uh, who, who wants to go? Scott, you want to go? Uh, see if I can remember my... Yeah, I think I remember my five. Uh, some overlap with you, Nick. Uh, my overlaps were The Shining and Jaws. Uh, and Are those s- five and four? Ja- I didn't rank them. You didn't them. rank them? Okay, yeah, that's they're, fine. Yeah, they're, take, take them as they come. But yeah, Jaws, same reason. Like, you know, anytime you're at the beach, you kind of think about it, which is a pain in the ass, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, Shining, same thing. And it's Shining also has the benefit of being like a really good movie in addition to also being yeah. very scary and unsettling. Um, and then I also have, what do I have? Uh, uh, Mothman Prophecies, Creep Me Out. <laughs> yeah, Mothman's good. Uh, the Exorcist is still, I think still holds up as a pretty scary movie. And is that five? That's Jaws, Moon, Shining. Jaws, Shining, Exorcist, Moth, Mothman. Mothman. It's four. I swear to God, I had another one. Uh, oh, uh, I don't know. My, I think I had another one that an honorable mention was Silence of the Lambs. Um, hmm. Not because it's real scary, but there's a good, like... <laughs> there's a good like creepy tone to it the whole time there's a good jerking off and throwing semen there's in also a faces. good jerking off and throwing semen at someone's face scene which gets <laughs> there's a scene where he's, uh, she's following her around in the basement in the dark and everything that's pretty cool oh yeah yeah yeah, really yeah. yeah, the, uh, yeah where, where he's got the night vision and she doesn't and she doesn't know that yeah yeah, he's around all she. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It, it puts the lotion in the basket, or else it cuts the hose again. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. It's I think put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Would you fuck me? <laughs> I'd fuck me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I think my sense of the lens was not well mentioned. Then I had another one in the top five, but it's not coming to me, so if it comes back, I'll let you know. You'll Otherwise, yell it out. Other, You'll proclaim it, it to the world. Otherwise, there's five. <laughs> I've, I've been able to come up with four. Uh, unfortunately, three of them are overlaps. Well, I, th- I think that's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. Uh, number one at the top of the list for me would be... You go be five. Five, okay. Five, five. to one, or All four right. to one. Four to one, okay. So, four... It's the reveal. Uh, ...would be uh, Event Horizon. Uh, like Nick, because uh, it was pretty visually disturbing, especially when I first saw it in high school. In spite of the fact that I was told it was the scariest movie of all time, <laughs> I went ahead and saw it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah it, which is exactly why I didn't see it. And yeah, it was it was, it was, it was pretty visceral and disturbing. And you know, even though I'd seen uh, a few Clive Barker films of that by that time, you know, it was still uh, pretty intense to watch the scenes from hell. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Next up would be uh, this is this is way off the chart. This is uh, one that nobody would probably really consider, but uh, and it probably doesn't speak well about me. But I've seen Salo, or 120 Days of Sodom, mm-hmm. and that movie is, is incredibly fucked up mm-hmm. because that was not so much scary. It's not so much scary. It's just messed up just, shit. Just wrong. Unsettling. Just wrong sh- stuff happens. Uh, 
one one element, there's one scene in the film that can basically sum up the level of depravity of the film, and that is coprophagia, the act of eating shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And here, here's my problem with that. Because um, the, the way they made the shit was cocoa and marmalade, yes. if I remember correctly. Which, to me, is as gross as eating <laughs> shit! <laughs> Fuck that! It's terrible! Like, if you actually wanted to torture me... You would make me. <laughs> I hate chocolate orange shit. It's the worst. <laughs> so yeah, that movie, while it didn't have any horror elements to it at all, definitely gave me a serious case of the heebie-jeebies. Yes. Yeah. Or the Hebrew jeebies, as it were. <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking further of Hebrew jeebies, uh, Moth Night Prophecies would be number two because I distinctly remember watching that. Uh, very Ill- illy advised, uh, in the dark by myself in the basement. <laughs> yeah. So for the next. Two weeks after seeing that movie, so creeped out. I refused to leave the basement in the dark <laughs> in the night. Even if I had to piss in the bathroom upstairs two levels, I refused to leave the basement. It was just too scary. I couldn't go out a window at all, and I, without expecting Mothman to come flying at me and for me to crash the car, which I wasn't driving because I was inside a house. <laughs> so you crashed the house. Yes, I would crash the house <laughs> into a lamppost, which is also scary. Yes. And uh, top of the list for me would be The Exorcist, because I first saw that when I was probably 13 years old, because my uncle was a big horror movie buff. He loved movies in general, but he really liked horror movies. And uh, he was over for Christmas one time, and yeah, so I watched it Christmas Eve. That is a good Christmas present. And we're going to watch The Exorcist. The Exorcist, great Christmas movie. The Exorcist. <laughs> great Christmas movie. And I think just the scene where the girl is stabbing herself in the cooter, yelling, Jesus fucks me, over and over again. Love it. Really scarred me heavily as a kid. <laughs> Fucking love it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and uh, another movie that just came into my head as I was talking about Clyde Barker and movies I saw. We'll make it number five? I, I might get number five here. Uh, it's In the Mouth of Madness. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie's messed up. Because Sam Neill, what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, going to Sam Neill, just because, yeah, it was really quite out there and yeah. it was almost real enough in its portrayal of the elements happening just sort of the way things unfold in the movie that it yeah. made you not want to do anything mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. like writing out your own fate yeah <laughs> oh man and so I guess yeah I managed to pull off five off the top of my head without no, knowing what I'm supposed to do uh, the, I haven't seen it but uh, uh, the thing from the original one yeah. the 1982 one that one's apparently scary as hell I haven't seen it. Uh, Nick, you got a take on the thing? Uh, it's. I wouldn't say that it's scary, but it is fucking amazing. It honestly is. If I were to list, like, you know, the top 20 horror movies, it would probably, if not be in the top 10, it would be pretty close. It's. The effects in that movie yeah. are just. They're incredibly. In how yeah. fucking gross they are. They're incredibly revolutionary yeah, for the time, too. Yeah, in, uh. It's just the way they did, I think, with the like, animatronic kind of stuff. Even even this now, it real. holds up. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say it's very scary, but it's like it's definitely very revolutionary for the time of like being 1981, 82, 82. Yeah. yeah, it was 82. 82. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's pretty good. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's that scary. Yeah, it's just awesome. Okay, like just incredibly awesome. <laughs> yeah, but never ever see the second one. Okay. Yeah, don't. There's react. nothing it's like useless. there's nothing like taking a classic and taking a huge shit on it, like watching the thing, the second one. I will say for you know for the red for you know Carpenter's version of the thing, it's a movie that you can so easily just immerse yourself completely into. Like you, suspicion of disbelief goes completely out the window. You are totally in this movie, yeah. and you care for everybody, and you pay attention to every tiny detail. It's a movie that you easily get sucked into, and I think that might be where some of the horror lies, just because it's it's a very desolate movie at times, so it, it's 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 amazing. I, I can't say enough good things yeah, about it. for sure, for sure. I remember my other one. What was it? The Ring. Like Ringu? Or I, ha- I haven't seen Ringu because I hate foreign people, mm. and, we, and that one is apparently scarier than The Ring, but yes. Justin Tierney's your friend. Oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> at least you didn't use the C word. No. Only I do that. Cunt? <laughs> why, why would that come out? <laughs> <up? laughs> no, but yeah, I remember that, like, that, that was, yeah, like, quite unsettling, and, like, 
There's a few like the standard like ja- like early two thousands Japanese rip off the like the the jump cuts to something scary and stuff. Ah, yes. yeah, yeah. But like the whole thing has like this you know like impending feeling of doom and like you're kind you're really on edge for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah that sure, that sure. was my other one, and then Silence of the Lambs was my honorable. Honor, I, but I remember uh, a funny story about uh, about the ring and a couple guys we went to high school with, uh-huh. and uh, it was uh, Scott and my Scott and my Scott and I went to high school together, and uh, so one of our classmates. Uh, apparently was watching a bootleg of the uh, Japanese version of the ring and <laughs> just after the uh, the the when they show the full scene of the uh, of the videotape yeah. uh, with all the shit happening and finishing off with the scene of the well <laughs> one of, one of our other friends who knew he was watching the <laughs> ring at the time called him and matched the time it perfectly right after wow. the scene ended that is That's fantastic terrifying <laughs> And uh, my friend uh, promptly threw his phone across the room and kind of shattered it. <laughs> so good. Oh, that's a great prank. Oh. So that is awesome. Uh, Alex, you got yours? Yeah, I actually thought of a fifth one as well. Oh, good. Uh, so Hooray! Actually, good. Um, I'm going to start. I, I don't really have a rank for this, but if okay. anything would be number five, it would be this, just because it's probably not a very highly regarded film. But Darkness Falls, just because okay. I don't really watch horror films, and it's like one of the first pure horror films I watched, uh, like properly. Uh, and I think it was like quite a nice like home theater setup with all the surround sound and stuff. So, but when I think back on the film, it's only really the first scene that's scary or got any mm. jumps in it. Yeah, and for sure. Sort of, I was for the rest of the film. I was sort of like, oh, when's that gonna happen again? And it just doesn't. So mm. it's sort of for the tension and everything, and I don't know. So it just kind of creeped me out a little bit. Yeah, um, gotcha. And the rest... Oh, actually, the only other real horror film I have on my list is Don't Look Now. Um, I don't know if you've seen that one, uh, but I saw that in college, and basically it's just a very creepy kind of film. It's got a full-on sex scene in it as well, which yeah. is quite weird um, for a 70s film. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but there, there's like a, a quite a famous bit with uh, this. Basically, it's uh, their their daughter dies, and they spend the rest of the film sort of grieving her, and then uh, the father keeps thinking he sees her like in her red coat and everything, and uh, in the end, it it's got quite a creepy sort of ending, hmm. shocking sort of ending for the time, and it. it Creeped me out as well. Turns out the daughter's Very actually a thirty-four-year-old Russian immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically a midget. <laughs> so that was creepy. Sorry, sorry, little, uh, person. little person, little person. I don't want to get cursed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> sorry, Alex. Continue, continue. Um, and then, um, okay, so uh, the one that sort of got brought up earlier was Prometheus. In terms of me squirming in my seat, <laughs> the, uh, in cinema, the. Uh, Nick, you, you didn't mind being spoiled about it, right? It's yeah, the, go ahead, uh, it. It's where he's... She, they're in the... Like, the, the pod, like, the self-medication <laughs> bit, and um, she's trying to get the alien or whatever, like, I don't know, cesarean sectioned out of her chest. Essentially, essentially she's, she's been face-huggered, and now there's an alien growing inside of her, so she gets into the surgery machine... And the surgery machine has to give her an abortion. A C-section. A C-section abortion. Yeah. And yeah, the old just... upper deck abortion. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just... You can, you can keep uh, that, by the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so that's one. Um, okay, so I have to sort of rank these, I suppose. So I'll say for number two, um, Mulholland and Drive. They're just okay. one part in it. It's just a really weird movie, generally. David Lynch just not making sense. One hundred percent confirmed, Alex. Here's a yeah. quick not not to interrupt you, but a quick thing. My dad and I watch Mulholland Drive. I'm gonna say once a year, every year since it has come out, trying to figure out what the fuck that movie is about. And as yet, in I don't know, thirteen years or so, no success. No, nope. I've still no, never seen it. I, well. I, I haven't seen it. Um, fuck that movie. Uh, the, the one particular moment. Um, there's like a really random scene which has nothing to do with the rest of the film. Not that most of the scenes do anyway. The lesbian but shit? In it. From what I remember, they go to a diner, there's, they're in a diner or something, 
and they go outside. Terrifying! I know where you're going. Yes. I can't remember exactly. It's like some sort of demon is in the shadows and jumps out of there or something, and it just comes out of nowhere and is completely terrifying. Yeah, it is apropos of nothing. Yeah, they're in a diner having, like, this kind of, like, banal conversation, and then, what, yeah, they go, for whatever reason, like, they go around back to the diner and, like, behind... I don't know if it's, like, behind some boxes or a dumpster or something. Like, they go back, and it's it's very well shot to be scary. And, um, yeah, and then just this thing pops out, like, that, like that is the embodiment of all that is evil and scary in the world. And, and the first time I saw it, because, like, now I'm ready for it, having seen it 13 fucking times. But the first time, uh, yeah, one, uh, legit one of the biggest scares I've ever had in a movie, actually. Yeah, it's, uh, horrific. one... Yeah, just for creepiness, is A Clockwork Orange. Yes. Um, yeah. I can't even watch that film anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious. Um, I watched it a few times and liked it and everything, even though it was just kind of creepy in places. But uh, then I watched it one time when I was ill, and uh, <laughs> I think I had like, food poisoning or something. And then when it gets to the scene where he's getting his eye drops put in and you know being forced to watch the all the violence and everything, uh, I that made me physically ill, so I can't <laughs> watch that anymore. Great. So I, like if you can't if you like a certain food and then it makes you ill at one time, you can't eat it again. And that's how I feel about <laughs> <laughs> the movie version of food poisoning. Yeah. Yeah. Movie, so that's my fun. Movie poisoning. But it's it the movie served an important role. Because without a clock record, we would never have CZW. <laughs> that's true. Ultraviolence, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, CZW. You make me so mad. Um, it makes brain damage pretty mad, too, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> so mad that it made him kill himself. Um, I Okay, so I I based mine on... A, on I don't know if I did a different criteria or not. I kind of based mine on the very first time I saw the, this specific movie and how it made me feel, right? A few of them I had to go back to when I was a kid and I first saw them. Uh, like, the thing is, now that we've been talking about them, there's so many that are, like, honorable mentions mm-hmm. for all these, right? Yeah, like, yeah. some more that come to mind, like, I've actually seen Ringu. Uh, yeah. I didn't think The Ring was very scary, but I thought Ringu was scary as mm-hmm. shit. Um, there's another one like Ringu. It's called Juon or yeah, something? Yeah, Ju- The Grudge. The Grudge. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's The Grudge. The grudge. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's apparently the Japanese one. Or Korean? Uh, Korean. The Korean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently I, I, scary as shit. I've seen I The seen Grudge. It. I haven't seen yeah, the haven't original. Seen yeah, I haven't seen Yeah. Um, another I, one that... I will not be seeing that, by the way. Yeah, another one that's like pretty high on my list I didn't use was uh, Wreck. It's the Spanish version of Quarantine. Like yeah, the I heard that one's really scary. Oh, okay. And the reason that one's makes really... Me try and watch that, so every now and then and I'm just yeah uh, hesitant I think the reason that it scares me is because it, at cer- at a certain point when it gets dark and they're just running around with a camera and things are just like jumping out all over the place like cuz you like you know it's coming but you don't know exactly when it's coming like and the fact that you're you're trapped and you can't get out and there's things trying to kill you just oh it's if like and I you know I actually didn't even mind the American version quarantine it wasn't as good but I didn't like it was still pretty creepy um, and like, yeah, Mothman's really creepy. Um, but if I had to go like, I, like, so number, number five for me is, uh, from when I very, the very first time I saw it, um, Ernest scared stupid. Ernest scared, Ernest goes to camp. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, is, uh, is it. And I know it's technically oh, a made, made, I forgot about made it. for TV movie, but the yeah. fact is I saw that movie when I was like nine mm. and I was already terrified of clowns. So then seeing that movie, like, scared the shit out of me, because, and, like, ever since then, I've not, like, clowns. Now that I'm an adult, and I realize that the the clown was fucking Tim Curry. uh, (laughs) The clown was Frank N. Furter. Yeah, that that the clown was Herkimer Hermolka. Uh, Like, not afraid of it at all, but as a kid, like, absolutely terrified me. Because there's nothing that scared me more. There's, okay, that's not true, because number four is a movie that's something that scared me even more than that. Uh, and that was Cujo, because oh, yeah. I am deathly afraid of of large dogs that I yeah. don't know or I don't know the owners. I'm fine around dogs where I know the people or the dogs like seems really friendly, but random dogs on the street I will avoid like the plague. And that movie scared the shit out of me. And like I've watched it since, and I don't actually think it's that good of a movie. Uh, it's it's, a, it's a good. Okay it's, I, I don't find it that scary because I don't 
Care You're not those, afraid of dogs. dogs yeah. But that movie as a kid terrified me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then number three is a, is an overlap as well, and that's uh, The Shining. When I saw that the first time, pretty scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> kill, kill me, <laughs> You son of a bitch! Oh, my God. He jumped in and scared the crap out of all of us. Well, I need to change my underwear. <laughs> Oh, well, Alex and Nick, say hello to Kelly. Hello to Kelly. <laughs> hello, uh, Kelly. Hello. Okay, so now that Kelly scared the poop out of us, um, number two for me uh, is, and like I said, again, it goes back to the very first time I saw it, uh, and that was the first Paranormal Activity. Be- just because... Uh, you didn't know what to expect going in, and the way that they had portrayed it was that, well, it's supposedly real, but they didn't really show you that much in the previews, and then there is really a lot of demonic shit in that movie, and it's very, very good. I wish that I hadn't seen 2, 3, and 4. And the number one for me, uh, 100%, is uh, The Descent, Um, Mm -hmm. because, again, it goes with the, the trapped in the dark, Things trying to kill you, you can't get away. Uh, it just and the fact too that like I think I'm a little bit claustrophobic, so being in underground caves is something that's not really something I ever want to do. I would never go spelunking. So how about ass spelunking? <laughs> I'll do some ass spelunking. Sure, why not? I mean, I am I am an otter, so that's right. But uh, yeah, that that's definitely uh, number five for me. Kelly, did you make a top five? I, you know what? I couldn't come up with five because as a kid, I refused to watch horror movies. Oh. Uh-huh. But it doesn't have to be kid. It could be anything you've Good seen man. in the last... Uh, I, I can tell you three for sure. Okay. Uh, one was Gremlins when I was a kid. Mm. That movie the first one was me. That scared me when I was a kid, too. But then I saw two and yeah. wasn't scared yeah. of one anymore. Well, Hulk Hogan was in two. How could you be scared of that? Listen here, Gremlin right. dudes. <laughs> when people come to the movies, they want cold drinks, <laughs> hot popcorn, <laughs> and no <laughs> monsters <laughs> in the projection <laughs> drew, <laughs> brother. And then he rips his shirt. And then he rips his shirt. Yeah. He's wearing his gear. <laughs> well, Kelly, don't you see movies in your gear? I do. Yeah, there you go. I'm um, actually wearing my gear right now because we filmed some stuff right yeah, before legitimately this podcast. But anyway, so you saw Gremlins as a kid. That so scared that, you. That scared yeah. me. Um, troll? Did Troll scare you? No. No? I didn't see Troll until I was like 6, 17. How about, how, about, how about Troll 2? How about Troll 2? I do have Troll 2. <laughs> but I have yet to watch it. Um, no, uh, it, this this one I reminded me when I looked at the Facebook um, thing. thing. Ernest Scared Stupid scared me when I was a kid. Really? Because the troll in it is fucking terrifying. <laughs> it is kind of terrifying when and you're a kid. And he stole the souls of children. I was a child! <laughs> <laughs> Heck, you know who else stole the souls of children? Ernest. No, he, no he's, he's, he's a, not a child molester. He's not a child molester. He has the mind of a child. There's a difference. <laughs> was Sling Blade yeah, a child has, molester? He has the mind of a child in a fucking glass jar on his shelf. <laughs> <laughs> That one, when I first saw Signs, that really creeped me yeah, out. Yeah, Signs really creeped me out. I had to walk, I, when I, after I saw it, I had to walk home, so I kept thinking aliens through, were watching Through a cornfield? No. <laughs> but I kept thinking some of the aliens were on the roof watching me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While, while, Phoenix, while Joaquin Phoenix got, went crazy. <laughs> I cussed. Did you hear me? I heard. I, heard. Um, I, I guess, lately, the only, in the last couple of years, the only movie that's really scared me has been the first Paranormal Activity. Yeah. Um, Made you poop yourself. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and yeah, I just liked how it had to do with demon stuff rather yeah. than fucking ghost stuff. Yeah, or that. like chairs moving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ghost cat. Ghost scat. Yeah. The uh, Nick Nick uh, Nick proposed that uh, most of the action that takes place in the later movies is the result of an invisible, larger than average cat. <laughs> <laughs> A puma. That's true. An invisible puma. Ocelot twice. Um, I thought of a couple other ones too that were pretty intense. Uh, watching the audition. It's a Japanese oh, yes. horror yeah, movie. Yeah. That's okay. a, is that a Mike? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. Uh, I remember watching Twenty Eight Days Later for the first time. That was um, I, just I because was, of the way yeah. it's filmed, right? It's kind of that. It's kind of that. Like I, I don't want to say indie, but you know, it's like that kind of grainy, 
fast paced, yeah. like it was camera very, jostling. It was very not Hollywood. Yeah, they shot that all on a mini DV camera, so that's probably why. Yeah, 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 definitely. But that was definitely a little creepy yeah. for me when I first watched it's, it. Yeah, it's a very edgier scene. Um, and then as a, as a kid, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, Alien, Aliens, yeah. Predator, and Predator 2 Predator. all scared the shit out of me Predator. because I was so Predator. young. I always wanted Predator to win. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I absolutely definitely. But you got it this time. You know Predator why? Won. It's because in Predator 2... Look at Danny Glover this time. In Predator 2, when he goes into that that drug house and kills all them guys and yeah. skins them and they're that all hanging upside cool. down from the roof, yeah. that definitely gave me nightmares when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Movie Going to sort of my my uh, my criteria, movies gave me heebie-jeebies. Uh, one, two more popped in my head. One recent, one pretty old. Uh, the older one is uh, Seven. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I think everybody probably peed a little when the fucking corpse came back to life and breathed. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, in front yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Cop's face. Um, and also knife dildo. Yeah, I was just saying that. I, you know, <laughs> I saw Seven recently for the first time. Uh, <laughs> was pretty, 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 pretty upsetting. Uh, recent that upset me, which. Uh, by all accounts, even by my admission, is a terrible movie. Uh, it was the happening <laughs> because it was unsettling. Because <laughs> it was horrible for, for whatever reason. Uh, people that are hung really fucking disturbed me. Oh yeah, <laughs> and you know what? Me the it and was people hanging from the trees. Yeah. Oh my god! I was like, fuck this. Yeah, yeah. There was definitely a very uncomfortable scene. I don't want to spoil this for anybody, I guess, but it doesn't. It's not really a spoiler because uh, I saw Sinister. There is definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a very uncomfortable hanging in that movie. Ugh. Very uncomfortable. Like Not a whole uh, up your alley. It's a whole family plus it's two it's two kids and it's very graphic. Like, you know, yeah, a lot like of a trailer. I watched a trailer that had all those oh. all those weird video parts in it and that yeah. was in there. A lot, of, lot of like you know, like you can really movie. see like them like struggling. I actually put the trailer for Sinister in my my top five. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's yeah, a very effective not, trailer. It's Alex, you, you only need to see the trailer. You don't need yeah, to see the, the movie. Yeah, the trailer spooky, but the movie yeah, not, was Yeah, not joking. Same for me. Two very scary trailers I've seen recently have been Sinister and Insidious. Like oh, both, oh, both, both, Insidious. No, both of those Insidious. trailers okay, I found well, really scary. Drew will go on his thing and I'll go on mine about Insidious. I don't need to go on it. You can go on it. Okay. I've been talking about Drew, Drew hates Insidious. I liked it because the movie constantly changed because you thought it was one thing, then it went to another thing, then it went to another thing. So right. I like. I only do. liked the parts once he got into the the the, the other side. The, the other side. I was gonna say, uh, fucking what you would call it, limbo. Limbo. And he sees that family sitting on the couch oh, and yeah. that whole scenario that builds up with them. That's the only part I really like. The rest of it, I, I don't know, I wasn't so thrilled about it. And Sinister, I didn't really like at all. No, Sinister wasn't that great. Sinister was fine. Like, fucking e- Ethan Hawke wearing that goddamn sweater, sweater. The whole fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nerd. <laughs> fucking nerd. <laughs> Actually, another one I just thought of. I've only seen it once. I saw it at the theater and haven't since. And it definitely scared me at the theater. Blair Witch Project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that creeped me out. You know, I was completely unaffected by that. Actually. I, I legitimately, and the end was so creepy. I legitimately thought it was real when I was a kid. That's why I didn't yeah. see it until I was older. I actually <laughs> thought it was real because when you're like ten, you don't realize that it's not real. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely did not want to see that movie, and then I saw it later. It was still pretty creepy. Oh, yeah. there was a... I'd never seen it, but a friend of mine told me about it. And just his description of the movie is what terrified me of it. <laughs> I have yet to see it. I maybe saw, like, a preview for it. Like, you know, back in the day when pay-per-view, like in the 90s, where if you go to the pay-per-view channel, oh, yeah, like scramble. the trailers and stuff scramble like that. Scramble porn. Yeah. Classic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I saw a trailer for it there. The trailer scared me. It was called Pinocchio, and it was about... Oh, the, the, the dark, horror. The, the horror. horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. dark Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Scared the shit out of me. It definitely... Because it made the sounds that Stewie Griffin makes when he runs away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Every time I see and hear that, I think of it. Yeah, for sure. Good description. Um, another one that I just thought of just, that made me really uncomfortable when I saw it the first time was, uh, was Hostel. It was oh, very, yeah. very, maybe very uncomfortable the very first time, especially... Torture porn. Y- yeah. yeah, essentially torture porn, but, yeah. like, just the graphic detail, like, and to props to Eli Roth, because he's, like, a, a horror genius. Like, he really is. He's, like, the next guy to hopefully make really good horror movies, because he's done some good ones. Still waiting. But, uh... I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's done some good ones. <laughs> mean. Very mean. But good thing Eli Roth will never be on this podcast. You don't know. Well, that's true. But, uh, yeah, Hostel really creeped me out when I first saw it. We did have Skrillex for a brief moment. 
movie I do have to see. Uh, I just thought of one actually. Um, you guys ever seen The Vanishing with Jeff Bridges? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, very, very goddamn creepy ending. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. the whole crazy. It turns out it was it, Bo it, Bridges all along. Really <laughs> It was Lloyd Bridges back from the dead. Although I think he was still alive. He's still alive back, man. Yeah. I just, you know what? It's funny, Nick. I actually just recently watched that, like maybe a week ago. I had never seen it before, and like, goddamn, Jeff Bridges is creepy that entire movie. Like, he yeah. is the biggest creep in that movie, and I love Kiefer, and I thought Kiefer was great in that movie Kiefer. too. And see, I saw that movie like when it first came out came out on VHS, so I was not very old. Yeah. When I watched it the first time, and it was ninety three, uh, so I was eight. Yeah, so I was pretty fucking creeped out. During <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah. It also definitely did something I like very much, which is limit Sandra Bullock's on screen time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for part one. Part two's coming right up, so stay tuned. You know the drill. Why am I even doing this?